The following is a presentation of TFNN. The morning markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time on Thursday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have markets off of the overnight lows, but you're basically flat right now after quite an acceleration yesterday. You're talking about basically 100 points, folks, where we were coming into yesterday's Fed decision at about 3,900. You got some volatility in both directions, man, but the trend is negative prices, folks, from 3,920 down to 30. 766 folks you're talking about is actually 3925 okay what is it i gotta do quick math man 125 plus 36 you're talking about 160 s p points what is that four percent yeah you're talking about four percent the s ps is that right that's right yeah In my mind it's it's tough to com um, comprehend the accelerations, folks, from 39.20 down to 37.66. That is 160 S&P points. 160 would be 4% on a 4,000-point index. Man, crazy action. Uh, and right now, we're up a bit, though. We're, what, 40 three points off of the lows so you're one percent off the overnight lows but i wouldn't be too excited right now for those bulls out there man tough day yesterday in the markets you almost got a slight reprieve for a moment right markets traded lower on the initial announcement you traded higher until the chairman started talking for a while then the market reacted uh to lower prices you have the nasdaq 100 trade down about 600 points folks that's approaching 5% from the highs that we were at. This morning, you're basically flat as well. The Dow up 53 points right now. Dow trades yesterday from 31,100 down more than 1,000 points. You almost got a 29,000 handle in the Dow. Excuse me. And the Russell, positive by one this morning. Volatility everywhere, folks. You jump over to Bitcoin. <clears throat> There's a gap for you in the overnight session. Uh, Bitcoin almost makes it to 20,000 yesterday, and we almost make it to 18,000 on the acceleration to lower prices. We jump over to crude volatility as well. Crude right now catching a bit, even since I look at that. That's eight minutes ago, man. Crude's up a buck fifty, charging higher. Crude traded lower yesterday with just about everything. Gold contract right now. Gold actually caught a little bit of a bid yesterday. We're approaching those highs yet again, up near 1690 in the gold contract. Now, gold, you take a look at gold on a longer-term basis, man, just chopping around towards the lower portion of this consolidation that gold has been in, you could say, uh, for the better part of two years, going back to June of 2020, when gold originally charged higher out of the COVID acceleration to lower prices. And... You know, where these lows actually rest, folks, we are right near that level. I've talked about it many times in the program. If you have not seen it yet, I'm talking about either you go back to March of last year. We had a low in the 1670s. You go back to late March that year, lows in the 1670s. You fast forward to August, lows in the 1670s. You back it up to just July of this year, lows in the 1670s. Now, we got below that level, though, folks, 1661 was the low last week. We got 1661 again, the low this week. We're right now at 1689 now. You could make the case that maybe this consolidation area deserves to be a little bit lower. Maybe that's a fair representation, ticking the bottom lines in terms of the 1673 area. But as you can see, man, gold in some dicey areas bro uh, broke just below that low, and we'll see if gold holds at 1688 right now. We jump to notes and bonds. What do we got, folks? We got lower price and higher yield. That's going to be the first headline we kick off the program with. We're talking about a yield right now in the 10-year above 3.6%. How about it, man? Above 3.6%. The yield on the 10-year. Pretty remarkable when you look at it, man. And getting into things even further on the 15-minute 
There was your volatility yesterday, and so much for a spike, man. You spike to 113.09, you get all the way up a full point to 114.09, and we give it all back, and we're challenging these low, those lows right now at 113.14 in the 10-year. The 30-year, pretty similar charting action. We're down to 129.15 right now. This thing's accelerating from almost 131, folks, and almost 131 at 7 in the morning, man. So we're talking about moves that are still happening right now, even in the last couple of hours, man. They are happening right now as we speak. And we jump over to the VIX this morning. Still relatively calm, man. Think about the action that happened yesterday. Now, you had the VIX go from 25.50 to 28. But, folks, look at this chart. All we're doing is chopping around where we've been basically since last Friday. You take a look at the VIX on a daily basis. You just look at where we've been this year not really elevated to the levels that we've seen prior when you've seen some of those market lows, man. Every time we've seen a market low this year, when we've exacerbated some of that selling for peak fear, peak premium that the market's charging, you're talking about almost 39 on the first sell-off. You're talking about almost 38 in February. You're talking about almost 37 in May, and you're talking about almost 35 in June. And meanwhile, we just got to 30 this time, not even close to 35. Uh, as we approach an elevated VIX of 27.53, well off the high, uh, lows of 20 or so from where we were prior, though. All right, let's jump to that headline as we kick things off. Bond yields rise. Now, we got central bank action all across the globe, man. The Federal Reserve signals steeper rate path of monetary policy, but you got Switzerland, Norway, the UK joining the tightening wave, and the yen has some action this morning as well. Two-year rates continued to push above 4%. I will pull up those rates. Uh, let's see if I can even get it right now. Can I? Yeah, two years around 4.1%, folks. Here they are. Let's start here. I just talked about the 10-year, 3.61%. How about the two-year? Almost 4.1%, man. The five-year at 3.83. The 30-year is pushing 3.57%. I read something yesterday. I think mortgage rates are going up to, right now, six and a quarter, six and a half percent. Makes sense when you got this type of action going across the board. The policy for the Fed is set to continue until funds levels reach either a terminal rate or a level of 4.6% at the end of 2023. There was no reprieve yesterday. Uh, at all, folks. Back to the article on Bloomberg here talking about uh, what we have going on. So the Bank of England delivered a second consecutive half point interest rate hike in its battle to bring down inflation. Three officials there pushed for the institution to join its global peers in moving at an even quicker pace for the Bank of England. Now, the Bank of England, uh, the move to two and a quarter percent was backed by five of the nine members, including Governor Andrew Bailey, while one voted for a smaller move. It was the seventh increase in a row. Now, Bank of England is way ahead of the ECB, folks. OK, the ECB's just joined the party with their first hike uh, and they will be hiking. We'll see how far they can go with their economy going on there. Uh, but let's get into some of those currencies as this market rolls over, man. We got the S&Ps now negative by two real quick, putting in on a five minute chart. We're coming right back down. Yeah, we had lows at about 7.30 this, folks, this morning of about 37.92. Let's jump to some of those currencies as we jump into this first break. There's your dollar index. We spiked to 111.81. We almost got 112, man. Remarkable. We were just at 109.35 early Tuesday, and we're pushing 112. Now we're pushing about 111 in the dollar index. Uh, we t jump over to the pound U.S. dollar. Now, I've been talking about the pound, man. I I've been talking about the euro. You check it out. We're going to talk to our man Kevin Hanks when we get back. Okay. But well, we'll talk about little currencies, a little markets. We'll talk a little bit about a little yen later in the program because that is a break, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P futures negative by about three right now. You get the Dow futures inching into the positive, positive by three. NASDAQ 100 negative by 29. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network with Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network. They walk you through the day's market action, folks. They got some great guests. They walk you through hypothetical trades. If you want to get into options, if you just want to understand options, great way to do it is watch their program, folks. Check it out. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Crazy, interesting, fascinating markets we have going on right now. And, you know, Jerome Powell did what, you know, Jerome Powell needed to do yesterday, and that is basically tell the market, that's waiting for the pivot in interest rates that it isn't coming anytime soon, Tommy. And what he basically said is there's 125 basis points more of interest rate hikes coming by the end of the year. Well, let's do the math. That's another 75 and a 50 going, going till the end of 2022. So Tommy, uh, volatility is here to stay. A lot of people don't really know how to trade. They haven't traded markets where interest rates are going up unless you're older you haven't seen a market like this so it's really interesting to watch this play out over time also central bank activity all over the board bank of england switzerland japan in buying yen this morning uh taiwan norway indonesia all moving interest rates in some way so uh Tommy, there's a lot going on today yeah, you bring it up, man, in terms of the volatility. Uh, I was born in 1980, Kevin, and I, I bring it up because I had savings bonds, man, that I cashed in like eight, maybe 10 years ago. And the yields on those savings bonds in 1980, man, that is my only exposure uh, to these yeah. types of numbers, man. But I, I think they were pushing like 
13, 16, 17 percent, something um, that we are not familiar with. I am not familiar. That is my only familiar it's, uh, with those numbers, but I bring it up because I'm using. Now, just, let me be just, clear, Tommy. Zero interest rates that we've had for all this time, that is a tax on the elderly and savers and, and people who uh, focus on the bond market. That's been a tax on them for years. So no one should think that interest rates going, you know, the two year going to 4% and the 10 year sitting at 3.6 is some egregious move in interest rates. It's not, right? So th- this entire market, as we know it, is trying to get back to a more equilibrium level. And some of it's a little painful, frankly. Listen, you make great points, man. I mean, the, I, I remember taking, um, you know, whether it was in high school, just talking about economics, talking about the cost of capital, talking about whether you either consume or you save, Kevin, right? If you consume, well, that's one thing. If you decide to save, then you're supposed to be saving so you can consume more in the future. Uh, that's supposed to be an interest rate, man. Can you talk briefly, Kevin, because I wasn't even going to go there, but you bring it up and it's a great point and I've asked you about it before. We have some real market pullbacks going on, but we have yields for the first time. Um, Pretty attractive levels, man, even on the two-year. The 10-year, right. I think, is above 3.6% t- today. And I know you're not a financial planner, man, but you made a great point when I asked you this question previously. And for those that weren't watching, um, for those looking, whether you're looking at markets, right, whether you're looking at that fixed income yield and how, you know, in this type of environment where you have the S&P more than 1,000 points off of the highs, but now you have yields at an attractive level, how, you know, where you are along the spectrum of an investor, and I'm not talking about trading that you guys talk about but would you be comfortable maybe just kind of reiterating what you talked about as where you are on that spectrum of whether you're you know age or just retirement or investment needs if you're young if you're in your 20s and early 30s and just starting your family your portfolio probably should have only a, a small amount of bonds and i don't know the exact percentages you're right tommy that's not my area of expertise but if you're getting close to retirement and getting up there close, you know, or, or in retirement, a big percentage of your net worth should be in, in the bond market and, and where, where you're getting those yields and the income is more stable. So, yeah, the, the transition, a lot of people talk about 60-40, but as you get older, it should be higher than that. And now that rates are coming to realistic levels and yields, uh, you're, you're probably going to see, a, you know, a, a lot of interest in notes and bonds. Tom, you got a two-year note trading over 4%, 4.1%. That's a two-year. That has got to be extremely attractive to a lot of people. But remember, in the next, from between now and the end of the year, it might be higher than that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of interesting. You know, the good news is, you know, the, the yield, as you know, in the principle won't change. But the deal that you get in, on a future purchase may actually improve. So there's a lot going on. Here. And that, that competition between stocks and bonds and note yields is what's really coming into play here, Tommy. Yeah, I bring it up, Kevin, because I think not and not for the first time, because we've it's really this year, maybe for the first time in a while, as yields have been rising all year, they become more attractive, more attractive. And they're now at levels that you can't help ignore it, man, in terms of where you are. Uh, very difficult in my mind if somebody's was retired, and we're jumping around today, we're doing a little uh, you know, investment portfolio management discussion, but it was very difficult in my mind, Kevin, to see the attractiveness level when you had yields at 1% or half during the COVID lows, or even at 2% or a percent and a half, where you're just keeping up with inflation at those levels, even in a normal healthy economy. Not the case anymore, man, with yields at 4% above 4%. Uh, We jump from that. We go on, Kevin. We have some companies out, but we're trailing off on earnings. Uh, But we still got some market action, to say the least. Some fundamental numbers out there this morning with jobs. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12 today? Yeah, you're right, Tommy. It's wafer thin in terms of good names for earnings. But today we have two good ones, and that is Costco and FedEx. Now, FedEx is already pre-announced, and a lot of the shock from their earnings is already in the stock. But that doesn't mean we can't trade it. And and look, you know, it's still got an expected move. It's still got uh, event volatility. Costco, very similar in that they were they release same store sales on a monthly basis. But we'll look at Costco and FedEx, and then in our third, we'll look at uh, Salesforce.com, a stock that's gotten pretty beat up but has an upgrade uh, the last. 
uh, I think, today. So we're going to trade Costco, FedEx, and Salesforce.com. Salesforce, man, that's an interesting one. I jump back to FedEx. We talked about FedEx. I think it was Tuesday morning um, that we referenced them. They were coming out. Maybe it was yesterday morning. I got them up on the Thinkorswim platform uh, for the weekly options that expire on Friday. So you're going out basically through tomorrow. You got about a $6.82 move priced in. Now, you talk about they already pre-announced. Maybe you'd say, well, that's a big move. Well, guess what? FedEx, man, what are they down? 10 bucks from where it was Tuesday, and you only have a $6 move priced in. So we got movement everywhere in this market, whether you got earnings or not. And Salesforce is always an interesting one, man. The cloud, uh, they got some volatility well off their highs earlier as well. Kevin, we appreciate you taking the time, as always, man, on a busy week. We look forward to the program today. We'll be watching at 12. And uh, as I like to say over the weekends, man, it's going to be interesting to see. We don't talk to you on Friday. Where are we going to be on Tuesday, man? We got how many days is that? That's three full trading days until I talk to you next, Kevin. So have a great weekend. I can't wait to talk to you Tuesday, man. Will probably be somewhere different, Tommy. We'll see you then. <laughs> you heard it, folks. Turn it to an in fast market today. Kevin, thanks, man. Have a great one. Folks, check it out today. You heard it. Three great stocks FedEx, Costco, and Salesforce. Uh, FedEx and Costco with their numbers. You take a look at Salesforce, man. If you liked it at 311, you're going to love it at 147, less than a year later. Mark. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Whoa. 
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and you open in negative territory. You're looking at an S&P right now, negative by nine points, 37.96. Uh, all the markets into the red just that quick. NASDAQ 100 coming into the open. When I was getting ready for the show, folks, we were almost 100 points higher than where we were trading at. And I'm talking about getting ready for the show 15 minutes prior to coming on the air, folks. In the last 45 minutes, you just had the NASDAQ 100 trade down 100. You're going to get volatility in both directions today, man. Probably telling you something that you already know, but keep it in mind. Uh, do not get married to positions. Keep your stops in place, man, with a market that's moving this quick. Crude, up $2.77. We get the gold contract catching a little bit of a bid, up $11. We're going to jump to the yen in a moment and check out the moves in the 10-year and the notes and bonds. It's not stopping right now, folks. Are these going to update these that I had? Trying to see if these, yeah, these are updating these rates, I think, uh, automatically, because we get the 10 year now at 3.65, and you get the two year above 4.1%. Wild stuff. The yield uh, in the 10 year continuing to rise. Let's jump around to some of the currencies. We'll end up at the end, but let's jump to the dollar first. Dollar pushing 111 right now at 110.92. I've been talking about the pound US dollar. Whoops, there's the pound yen. Of course, that's going to have movement today when we get the yen. Uh, with an intervention for the first time since 1998, I think it said. Here's your chart of the pound U.S. dollar. Okay, we'll put it on, let's put it on a daily going back for a while. Let's zoom in on this trend we've had basically since this year. Now, I've talked about it before. We get the pound basically chopping around towards the bottom portion of this line. The Bank of England, I think they're at two and a quarter or 2.5. They just hiked by 50 basis points today. They're well ahead of the ECB. So you could see the play here, folks, that you're going to get a little bit more pound strength versus you're going to get euro strength. Euro's in big trouble. I'm going to pull that up next. Okay. Um, yen's in big trouble too. But pound versus euro, pound it might be the stronger one to keep your eye on. Both of them, though, well defined channel lines to the downside. There's your action in the US, US dollar. And look what's happened, man. I've been talking about that it's up towards the top portion of that channel line folks this is not rocket science okay doesn't mean it always works but if you are trading the euro dollar keep your eye on that channel line man because we just hit the bottom, top portion of that and this is a daily okay there's your 15 minute we almost touch it to the tick and then you trade down basically two full points from a dollar to 98 we've caught a little bit of a bid let's see on a fibonacci basis how far we've popped not quite to a 382 maybe look at that our man Larry Pezzavento, right? Boom, we bounce to a three three eight two on the Fibonacci. Uh, boy, we ever get another leg lower, folks. You're talking about a two-point leg. That would bring us from 99 to 97 in the Euro-US dollar. And we jump over to the yen. You want some action, man. How about the yen? Trading down five full points from 145.89 to 140.34. There's your daily chart. Now, we haven't even pulled back, folks. Now, this tick here on September 13th is erroneous. OK, uh, that tail does not exist. If we just trade to a 382, you're still talking about 139. That's a natural pullback in a possible intact trend. I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. Uh, OK, and let's see what's driving the action. And you got an intervention over in Japan, man. We jump over to the headline Bank of Japan. Yeah, 1998 intervenes to support the yen for the first time since 1998. That was shortly after I was over in Japan. Very fortunate. I had taken Japanese in high school. Very fortunate there as well. I was able to take an exchange trip, stay with the family in Japan. Absolutely amazing people. So kind to me when I stayed there for a month. I was only 15 or 16 years old. Um, I think it was the summer after my sophomore year that I was over there, sophomore year. Uh, but an amazing experience to go over there. And at the time, to, to give you a quick glimpse, so at the time, Japan was on fire in terms of when I went over there early. I think I started taking Japanese in 1992 in seventh grade. You had to take a language. I was uh, at my school in middle school and high school. Very fortunate they offered it at the time. You had to take a language. I think they had Spanish, French, or Japanese. Decided to take Japanese. Probably regret it, wish I took Spanish, ended up living in, in Florida, and Japan ended up not taking over the world financially, as many thought was possible at the time. But it was a cool language uh, to take at the time. The thing is, is that the program was so new that, and the language is very difficult, that you went through six years of it, and you learned a lot of culture. 
you were not as proficient as if you went through six years of French or Spanish, where most kids were basically fluent by the end of high school if they studied at all. Japanese, not the case. And unfortunately, I forget like most of it or a lot of it because I haven't used it in, oh man, this one's a tough one, since 1998, the year I graduated high school. So that's that's pretty wild, man. So you you forget a lot of something when you don't use it for 24 years, folks. As crazy as that is. I got my 25th high school reunion coming up. How crazy is that? for a moment. We could spend a whole show on that. Okay, we jump back to the market. This is a big one. Japan intervened to prop up the yen for the first time since 1998 after its central bank sparked further declines in the currency by sticking to ultra-low interest rates as its global peers hiked. So the Bank of Japan, they stuck with low interest rates. Uh, that's why their currency is getting destroyed versus global currencies out there. The yen was pushing above 145 and then you had the top currency official said Thursday the government was taking, quote unquote, decisive action. The intervention shows that the prime minister's government has reached the limit of its patience after the yen tumbled around 20 percent against the dollar this year. Hedge funds have kept adding short bets on the yen. There seems to be no reprieve in sight. Now, we'll see if this turns things or if it's just slowing the tide. As they say, the question now is whether the unilateral action will work. With the currency already pairing gains within hours. Uh, I think they went in solo, but they can't do so without at least informing the U.S. as and they can't really stem the tide by themselves, folks. Uh, if, if they really want to change the yen slide as a trend, I think the government needs to get its act together with the Bank of Japan. But guess what, folks? You see the bounces that you have going on in this? Yeah, you traded below 141, and just like that, you were back above 143. Now, here's what was said. The government is concerned about excessive moves in the foreign exchange markets, and we took decisive action just now. Uh, that was the top banking official, right? Whatever his official name is in there. Top currency official is how they say it. Masato Kanda is their name. We're seeing speculative moves behind the current sudden and one-sided moves in the foreign exchange market. Ordered up by the Ministry of Finance. Sounds like a ministry uh, from an evil plot of a movie. The Ministry of Finance. It comes with risks if it fails to scare off speculators. Hedge funds have been adding to bearish bets on the currency with Goldman Sachs warning it may decline all the way up to 155. Now, it's interesting how currencies work, right? In terms of declining is going up here, okay? Because that is how many yen it's going to cost you to buy a dollar, right? So it used to just cost the Japanese 131 yen to buy a dollar. It was costing them 145 yen. The other way to say that is one dollar is buying you 145 yen right now versus it used to just buy you 132. Now it's to 141. Goma was talking about maybe 155. We had we talked to Teddy Kegstad every Wednesday. Uh, he writes a great report, folks, the Tiger Forex report. He has been calling this thing great to the upside. And uh, if you want to check out our interview, that's right on our YouTube page. Just search TFN or YouTube to see where the end goes. But the Bank of Japan finally stepping in as it was portion 146 this morning. Markets continuing to roll over. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets continuing to roll lower. We get the S&Ps now to add down 22 points, putting it back to a five-minute chart. It's been a drop-off, man, since about just right before I came on the program. Now, pre-market, you were up to highs as high as 38 33, and that was at about just prior to 5 a.m. Eastern time. You were as high as about 38.20, though, and that was just before I came on the program, folks. We're talking about almost 40. We're talking about basically a full percent. We've traded lower since just coming on the air. Now, the NASDAQ 100, you've given up about 150 points. You've given up almost 200 points from where you were overnight for the highs, and we're coming into some dicey area. You're only about 50 points away from yeah, 50 points away from yesterday's low in the NASDAQ 100. And what are we talking about right now? We're talking about almost 20 points away from the low that we were at overnight at about 9 o'clock. Uh, all these markets, Dow right now, similar territory. You're only 135 points away from 29,000 handled Dow. Let's jump over to commodities. Crude catches a bit as this is happening up to 85.65. Gold, only positive $5.00. Interesting what's going on with the yen. Gold does catch a little bit of a bid, okay? But maybe the market is saying that the yen is going to remain weak for an extended period of time as gold continues to find a bid versus the dollar, which sometimes can really drive the action there. We jump over to the 10-year. Yeah, and you just broke to lows on the 10-year right now as well. And you're talking about a yield right now in the 10-year above 3.65%. It's going to happen with mortgages, man. Mortgages are going to 6.5%, 7% potentially. Whew. Yeah, we might see a 112 handle as I just watched this thing. I mean, you put this thing on a, a one-minute chart. Since 9 o'clock, when I got on the show, folks, we're down almost a full point. We were trading at 113.26, and we might get a one. 12 handle by the time I get off the show as we're only four ticks away. Okay, I jump around to what else we have going on. And uh, this one, just a cool one in general, not Robin Hood. No, no, no. Where are we going? Yeah, we're going to this one. Uh, I love this James Webb telescope and everything it's showing us about the universe, folks. You could spend forever, you know, going over some of this stuff. Uh, but check out Neptune, okay? New images in Neptune. I got a couple articles here. Tired of Saturn's rings? How about... Check out NASA's latest image of the bands around Neptune. I mean, some of these images, folks, look at this. Look at those rings. And that's our, you know, you know planets. Uh, it is wild stuff what's happening with this telescope. You should check it out. Neptune typically appears blue. 
attributed to methane in the atmosphere, but pictures from the Webb's infrared camera show the planet white in color. The new photo shows thin lines of beautiful light around Neptune. Here we go, uh, which NASA says are high altitude methane ice clouds, right? Crazy. Uh, and those reflect the sunlight. Pretty remarkable, the images they're going to keep coming out of the universe. If you ever think you understand it all, folks, I don't know how you think you understand it all with everything going on. Um, because there is something going on, I think. But whew, understanding it all, that's a tall order with everything out there. Okay, what else do we have going on? So the SEC, they're not going to ban payment for order flow. They had floated the possible prohibition in sweeping an overhaul, regulator way, um, weighing ways to push more trading to exchanges. Nonetheless, it's not going to happen. You had Robinhood higher. Let's see how they're doing. Yeah, you give back some of that gain. Still up about 5%. Robinhood, I mean, check it out, right? You want to you wanna talk about Robinhood struggling, man? Robinhood is just back to where it was yesterday afternoon. It's just back to where it was yesterday morning. Meanwhile, the news is out that their entire, basically, business plan won't be banned overnight, which was possible. What would What would have happened? You know, they would have had a tough order, man, if they were not able to payment for order flow. flow. Uh, but they're going to show, stop short of banning it. And uh, it's proposing new rules for the, quote, unquote, $48 trillion American equities market. But that was a lot of deliberation that marks a win for brokers to get paid for processing rights. Although the SEC may still enact other changes that make the practice less profitable. We'll see what they come out with, I guess, and how that thing sorts out. There's arguments to be made on both sides where the actual reality falls, probably somewhere in between, as usually. The truth lies somewhere in between on most cases. Not always. Not always. Two sides, not to everything, okay? But uh, usually it does. <clears throat> now, talking about the Fed, Goldman lifts the forecast for Fed hikes on Powell's hawkish signal. Talking about where they are. They now expect the Fed... 75 in November, 50 in December. Okay, that's pretty much what the Fed said. So, yes, that's what they're going to talk about. 25 in February for a peak rate of 4.5 to 4.75. Uh, previously, they were looking for 4 to 4 and a quarter. It seems like this is the natural progression. That's basically just what the Fed did, right? But it's happening um, in terms of where they are. And they're talking about, Kevin Hanks referenced it, man, a point and a quarter po points before the year end. Now, what I will say is, folks, markets get ahead of everything okay they are going to price in everything they know while we know this now this should be priced in to a certain degree okay it's going to be priced in with the probability of it occurring so let's say there's a, a 90 percent probability that the fed hikes by a point and a quarter by the end of the year well 90 percent of that's going to be priced in just like if there's a merger going on or a takeover right the price appreciates closer to that level the higher the probability of that occurring the point I'm making, I think you can clearly understand that there's a lot of this that's already priced in as we see rates to 3.6, okay? So where does that rollover take place? We talked about it with Teddy Kegstad a little bit yesterday. Not sure when it takes place, but it will take place, all right? I don't think we're there yet because the numbers need to indicate that in some capacity because all the Fed is doing is telling you where they're going in the near-term future. Just think, we're going to go up a point and a quarter, okay, by the year end. We got two meetings. They're probably going to go 75 and 50, just like Goldman says. Why not, right? You wouldn't back end it. You'd front end it to get the most impact of the hike. And you'd probably go 75 again since they went 75 this time. Well, what happens to the data that we're getting by the year end? I mean, we still need to get September, October, and November data. You're talking about inflation. You're talking about retail sales. You're talking about at a time when potentially things are really starting to hit in terms of, you know, FedEx coming out with certain numbers that they're tanking. That may be indicative of some things, maybe indicative of certain things just going on at FedEx as well. But boy, these hikes, folks, they're coming. They're coming quick. So we had jobless claims this morning. 213,000, folks. That is in normal times. That is a very, very healthy economy. Continuing claims still hover near historically low levels. Okay? This is not what carnage looks like. Have to keep reiterating it because there's, a, it's human nature to tell yourself and convince yourself of maybe what you want to believe, which is the S&Ps have traded down more than a thousand points. We know a lot about what's coming. Maybe a lot of this is factored in. 
if inflation persists, the Fed has some room here to keep going. The market will not like it, okay? The Fed has some room to keep going. They are forecasting we're going to see that happen, as in we're going to see inflation, uh, excuse me, we're going to see unemployment, right, rise to what, 4.5, 4.3. We're going to see unemployment where it's going to affect potentially a million people going to lose their jobs versus where we are right now. That's not happening yet, though, okay? So those numbers still need to come. We're still at 213,000 people, very healthy economy, on a weekly just churn of initial unemployment claims. Stay tuned, folks. We've got one more segment. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got the S&Ps right now, negative by 27 points. It's been a straight drop since about 8.45 a.m. this morning. We're now just right back to where you were at about 3 a.m. Eastern time, and you're within about 15 points of the lows we made overnight in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, we're negative by about 120. That's a full percentage right now, and you're within about 40 points of where you were below the levels you were at at about 3 in the morning last night. We jumped to commodities, crude up about 2 bucks. We just traded down a dollar, though, from where it was at 86. You jumped to gold. Up about six dollars, nineteen eighty-one. Talking a little bit of Russia. Yeah, in any other world, this would be uh, the daily focus in terms of the geopolitical tensions that are ratcheting up. Whether it's Russia, whether it's China, going on as well. 
Uh, but now you have, whether you have protests, and just a couple I want to bring up here, man. Uh, and this is just a tweet from Ian Bremmer up here, but talk about the airport. I mean, you're seeing the news reports, folks, but check out the airport. Russian airports in chaos this week. I think they even stopped allowing men to even buy tickets. They sold out instantly. Uh, I can't blame them, man, getting out of there. I do not want to be drafted by Mr. Putin and put into his war, and I'm sure many people feel the same way. I mean, you look at this. Um, I was just going through his feed. A friend shared this into one of the group chats I was in talking about a, a sad situation for the Russian people over there as they're getting forced into that war. Searches for how to break an arm surged in Russia today. Anything to get out of combat. Unfortunately, yeah, I would say, you know, many people making some tough choices over there in Russia going on as things ratchet up. And how do you see the end of what's going on over there from a humanity standpoint? That's a conversation that you go forever. Um, from a market perspective, it's going to cause more volatility. There's the commodities that play into everything. And I don't see how that ends anytime soon to any degree when Putin makes it increasingly difficult for there to be any type of a deal, which is probably the best way to get out of that situation. Markets, man, dicey scenario. We got yield spiking, folks. Let's finish it up with the 10 year. Why not? As we hit 113 on the dock, can we get a 112 in the 10 seconds that we got to end the program? Maybe that will wait for our man Basil Chapman coming up next, folks. Thanks for starting your trading day with me. Basil's up next, folks. Stay tuned. Have a great Thursday, everybody.